What is going on YouTube? AntCap24 here, and we are excited to start the new series that we're doing with the Denver Broncos playbook. We've decided to start off with the gun tight as the first formation, as we really want to do something that you can kind of stay in as a main offense to really get you started with this. And as we add formations, definitely give you something to build off of. So gun tight's one of my favorite formations in the game in years past. Um, this year's got a lot of powerful things, and we're going to start you off with one of those today with the wide receiver crossers. This play is a great base play because it beats all coverages and it has a nice little bonus of beating cover three over the top when you get the right uh, matchup and the right read. And we're going to show you all those options here today in this video. So let's go ahead and start this Broncos scheme with the bang guys. We'll go ahead and show you the cover three bomb over the top. Okay. You got cover three here. You can see that um, you've got cloud flats. That's going to come into play a little bit later because that's the most common way people play cover three right now. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this Y and we're going to motion him to the right. Now watch the Y. His angle does not change. It continues to go to the right-hand side, and that's key for this play. We're going to put the B on a fade, and he's going to be our one-play touchdown opportunity. So let's show you that first. We're going to hike the ball. Y is going to pull that cornerback, and you're going to see how we're going to be able to throw this over the top to that player for the one-play score Um ability over there on the right hand side of the screen let's go ahead and take a look at it so what happens here is sanu here number 12 is going to get himself to the right hand side and you're going to see that he's going to pull that one coverage from the um strong the uh strong safety down but also that cornerback does not move and get complete depth because of it and you can see that we're going to get Julio Jones down the field for the one play opportunity score. You can always pass lead this over the cornerback's head. I saw that he was wide open. I didn't go ahead and do anything on the pass. I just kind of threw it straight. And that gave us the ability to get the touchdown, but it made it a little bit closer than it needed to be. Now, the key on the play is definitely the number 12 here on the receiver because of his route at Holtz. Now, I do want to make a mention that he needs to have a clean release. This is against nickel coverage without doing any pinching or any line adjustments. And you can see that he got a nice easy release up the field now if he happens to run into that defensive end if they pinch or if that defensive end is over the top of him that will affect the one play opportunity bomb because what's going to end up happening is is that the uh, cornerback will now go with the wide receiver because he does not have a clean release and is not in his zone quick enough leading the cornerback to follow Julio Jones down the field and it's going to change who you want to target on this throw so I want to make sure that when I run this play the first thing I always look at is number 12 if he gets a clean release I know that I'm going to have a good opportunity for a one play touchdown to Julio Jones so now let's go ahead and look at other coverages as well as cover three and what other options you have on this play other than the one play touchdown. I really like this because of the way it does double up as a base play because you do have ability to beat all coverages with it if you make your reads correctly. The first read's always going to be this Y on the out pattern. If he gets a good clean release, you're going to be able to throw this ball to him underneath the cloud coverage. You're going to be able to throw it to him quickly, no matter if they're coming from the strong safety spot or from the um, outside linebacker spot. He does good, do a good job of getting to the outside. Now, against cover three as well, your next option is also going to be the ability to um, throw it to the A underneath. It's definitely going to be one of those that um, it is your second read but it is, it's going to be the least uh, you know, effective as far as yardage goes, but it's going to be something that you can dink and dunk in case they go ahead and send some quick blitzes. So again, you're going to see that the A is going to be underneath. You're going to go ahead and be able to throw it to him, and you're going to get yourself a good four to five yards. It's just a quick option for you in case um, you get caught off guard with any type of quick pressure. Let's look at the last option against cover three, and that's going to be this X receiver as he comes across. What I like to do a lot is do a one-two punch with the B and the X. If I can get to the outside, it gives me the opportunity to go ahead and say, is B open? Great, let's throw it to him. If not, I'll wait for the X to clear everybody and get to the right side of the field. Um, if I can't get to the outside, then typically speaking, I'm going to try to dump it off to my Y or A if that was my you know initial uh, thought as far as using those two routes as a one-two punch. So let's go take a look at it here. You see the guy gets up there. I'm going to go underneath him. Then I'm going to wait for this X to come down. I'm going to throw it to this player on the sidelines for the nice easy catch. So that's all your options against cover three. This play works really well against other coverages as well. So let's go take a look at that. So now that we've got cover four all queued up, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, and typically speaking on this setup, let me go ahead and show you it again. Move this guy over, put the B on a drag. The first thing I'm looking for is to see if there is a dime back on the field. As you can see, there's only one additional um, cornerback, and that's on the left-hand side, making it the, the, the uh, nickelback. 
If there was a dime back on the right, then I'm going to kind of look at this a little bit differently. But because there's not, I'm going to look at this and say, you know what? If this is a cover three, my Y receiver is going to outrun the cloud flat to the outside because of the way the angle is. And I'm going to test that player for the nice easy catch. And I'll show you what I mean. So as long as this guy doesn't get bumped out, you're going to be able to see it, throw this ball to this Y receiver for the nice easy catch for about five, six yards. If you're worried about that cornerback on the right, what you need to do is go ahead and just low pass it, okay? If you low pass it, you can make, definitely shorten the route about a yard, but it also protects him from that. So here we go. There's the Y. I'm going to low pass it there. See how I low passed it? And I'm going to get about four and a half yards rather than the five yards because of the way it works. So that's really what you're looking for on that. Now, against cover four, especially because when we run it on the left hash, your next bet is going to be the A receiver underneath. Then the X is going to be your last receiver that you look at. And typically... I don't like to throw it to the X receiver um, unless I can get the middle linebacker user who's going to be the one on the left with a three receiver hook to bite on the drag, okay? Because typically um, the X doesn't do a great job of getting open on the right side like you think it would just because we're in a compressed set that one right cornerback will not go ahead and take the B down the field in a cover four situation. If we were on the right hash mark, it would, but not on the left hash mark. So you see the second option is going to be this A underneath. You're going to be able to throw it to him and kind of go work that out and what i was saying before as far as when do i throw it to the x it's when i go ahead and see let me make sure i get everybody in the right spots it's when i go ahead and see that the middle linebacker here um goes ahead and covers the a let me see here if i can get that here and let's do man coverage and he will not cover the a so we'll do it like that okay so if that guy goes ahead and covers to the right hand side of the field that's really where I'm looking to throw it to the X, right? So he goes that way with it. Now I'm going to quick hit him right back, right? So if we've noticed that we beat him to the right side, right side, right side, we want to do a quick hitter when he goes ahead and shades the right. You can see that it's a real quick hitter. If he just goes to the right and does not worry about it, we're going to hit him right on his break. So if he doesn't stay in the middle, you know, that's when we're going to burn him with this play against cover four. So let's go ahead and look at cover two as we got it all queued up. And we're going to show you that this Y is a really nice option against cloud flats when they are base aligned. So when they got a little bit further back, you're going to be able to throw this Y underneath it. So I like to go to this like on a third and short type play where, you know, third and three, third and four, where they don't want to play hard flats yet, but um, they think that they can rally down, that you're going to be able to catch them underneath. If they happen to play... Um, the hard flats, then we'll go ahead and we'll go for this X receiver. So um, the X receiver will work on cloud flats as well, but definitely if you are looking to throw it to the Y, you miss that read because it's hard flats, then you can kind of wait for that X to kind of clear, and I'll show you that here. So say you're looking for the Y, it looks like he's there. I'm gonna kind of step up in the pocket a little bit, throw this to this X, and you can see how nice of a play that's gonna be for some good yardage against cover two. So that's really how we like to do one, two punch with cover two. You always have the ability to throw it to the underneath player in A. Um, just because of the way that the X kind of shields him off, you'll have a quick hitter, you know, but it's not gonna be, like I said before, your main throw. You can be able to get that right there for the nice easy catch, but your main throw is really gonna be the right side of the field when we're running this play because of all the routes that are going that way. Well, we do appreciate it, guys, for watching this video and your support all year long. Go ahead and hit that like button if you like the series that we're starting um, on the Broncos playbook and really how this play opens up to start off this formation scheme. We do appreciate it, and we'll see you on tomorrow's video.